week, I'd like to thank my friends who helped me with this podcast. They saw every version of the recordings, every graphic, every website style, every color choice to make this podcast great. You can do anything, but you can't do everything. This quote comes from David Allen, the creator of Getting Things Done. We all have the same number of hours in the day. Sure, some people are awesome at planning and producing and knocking out a schedule, but we all have the same amount of time. We must eat and care for our loved ones and have fun and have hobbies, but also chill out and spend some time doing nothing. We also have to sleep in there. We will break if we don't do these things. We get burned out. We feel like our tasks are bossing us around. Then, eventually, it feels like we're victims of our schedules and not leading our lives. And we would not get anywhere if we planned a vacation like many of us plan our lives, with no ambition or direction. If we were to go to the center of the U.S. and decide to drive to Los Angeles. No, wait, New York. No, let's go to Fargo. If you drove like that, you would go nowhere. You would speed across Interstate 80, and then in a few hours, do a U-turn and go back. If anyone saw you doing this, they would wonder what's wrong with you. Well, that's how we live. It's not our fault. The world demands a lot from us. And then we get frustrated that few of our plans succeed. We're frustrated that we can't make traction on what needs to happen or what we dream of happening. We start to blame the very people and activities we love. We suffer from sunk cost bias where we feel we must stick to something because we've already put so much effort into it already. But this is where it becomes hard. Are you just at a tough part of your adventure and sticking to it would help you win and love your goal? Or are you just doing something that is not worth your effort? This is hard to tell, and it takes a lot of deep soul searching to figure out what the truth is. Work harder and get to the goal over the plateau or just quit and confess this wasn't for you. So what you're really looking for when eliminating the types of tasks that you have in your life is what gives you the most bang for your buck the most win for the least amount of effort. Especially if you're starting new in habits, once you start seeing payoffs with good habits, they start to roll and gain momentum. Right away when you start doing it, it's hard to creak out those habits and those behaviors. So start small, bang for your buck, and keep the effort level down. This is where the term essentialism comes in. Greg McKeon, in his book Essentialism, The Disciplined Pursuit of Less, From 2014, he advocates for the main point of the book, which is to focus your energy, resources, and prioritize. He talks about getting down to what it really means to move from a person who says, I have to, or I must, and insists instead on saying, I choose to, and only a few things really matter. You move on from saying yes to everything to deciding what matters. You go from being out of control in your life to feeling like the right things are getting done. You go from thinking that most everything is important to thinking that only a few things are important. You go from big goals and desires and big shiny wins and move towards small steps and big actions over time. He then discusses eliminate, the ongoing process of eliminating any and all things that are low value distractions and take away from us being truly effective. For eliminating, he suggests that you write everything down as a candidate and you start crossing them off. While many people ask you to imagine the future success and your happy self, he says to stick to what's important now. He suggests adding 50% time to what you think something will take. We are terrible at estimating time. We usually think that something will take a very small amount of time and it ends up taking a lot longer. With buffer, We reduce that stress and get those things done on time. This ensures that the important things will get done. According to this book, you must prioritize. And some things just won't drop off the list, but you realize that they are so far down, you won't even have time to worry about them. And is realizing that not everything is an A1 in your task list or your life. Look to what is the right time the right thing, the right reason, and also having the right resources in place doesn't hurt. Greg also warns in his book that his book is not about going back to a simpler time. It's not about lamenting emails or disconnecting for the web or living like a hermit. He says that that would be backwards. 
It's about applying a principle that less is better and to how we live our lives now and in the future. That's innovation. He says essentialism is not about how to get more things done. It's about how to get the right things done. The way of essentialism means living by design, not by default, and figuring out what the minimal viable progress is. We use this concept in software. What fields must you fill out in order for the product to work? He reminds us to reward progress. And then he says, if you don't prioritize your life, someone else will. He mentions one of my favorite quotes by Stephen Covey. The main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. He talks a little bit about backpacking as an analogy to essentialism and that the number one goal is getting to the campsite. There are pretty things to look at on the trail. There's trails that go off into every direction. But do we want to set up our tents in the dark? Do we want to go to bed without a cooked meal? The first thing is getting to the campsite in daylight, building a fire, setting up our tent. It isn't about denying us the pretty things along the way. It's about the main thing staying the main thing. Without it, we go to bed in the cold, hungry, and maybe sleeping on the ground outside. So some people love boundaries, and some people think it sounds pretty depressing. Some people love taking on new hobbies, and others are relieved when they don't have another thing to do. To write is human. To add it is divine. That's a quote by Stephen King. We think that we are the authors of our lives, but more importantly, we are the editors. When we say yes to something, we also are saying no to other things, or we have to say no to other things. If you decide to vacation in Dublin, do you also get to visit Paris that year? No. By picking one, you automatically say no to the other thing. If you pick one job, you're telling the other jobs no. When your coworker asks you to work on a project, it may mean that you're saying no to getting your own customer's work done. This doesn't mean we say no to everything and everyone, but we have to be careful about it. We also hate to say no. We think that people will be mad or offended, but we have to really understand that sometimes they're glad. A few years ago, I was the person at work who never said no to anything. I was doing tasks I shouldn't have been doing or robbing my coworkers of opportunities to shine while also putting my own tasks at risk. I swear that when I learned to say no, there were people smiling that I finally figured it out. I expected to get a secret club jacket from people who said, congrats on saying no. But for those of you who hate to say no, you can also say, well, I am doing these other things. Which thing should I drop in order to add this new priority? That helps put things into the right priority and give everything the right perspective. Doing that earns us respect. But it is time for us to give up on our sunk costs. Stop digging a hole. It's time for us to give up on the fear of missing out. We are not missing out. We are prioritizing. We must stop undervaluing our lives and give some time and our resources to what we want. And by getting what we want, we will make those people around us also happier because we are a happier person to be with. Practice saying no so that you can focus on what's important. Also, give yourself time to think about it. When people ask you to do something, you don't have to give an instant answer. But remember to give yourself time to play and sleep, and just to think a little bit. I heard this interesting discussion a while ago during the Joe Rogan Experience podcast. He was chatting with Joe DeSena about video games And I think a lot of people missed the point. As a gamer himself, he realized how fun they are and how addictive they are. And for the most part, they don't really get you anywhere in life. Most people will never have a job in gaming. They play a game, they'll become great at it, and then they'll set it down for another game. I'm a gamer too. Is it a waste to have fun and get your mind off of life for a bit? Not at all. But what the real point is in his comment was when it comes to priorities and progress. You don't. Yeah. Well, I'm, I have a real problem with them and you, you, you do them and they're real exciting, but you don't get anywhere. Right. It's like you could do like, like martial arts, right? You could learn jujitsu. 
You get obsessed by jujitsu. And then three years later, you're you're like an elite jujitsu athlete. You're like you're entering in competitions. You're a purple belt. You're, you're moving up. Yeah, you're doing well. Right. You're thinking like, I might be able to open my own school one you day. You got confidence. Yeah, if I have 100 students and those 100 students are paying me X amount of dollars per month, I can make a living. And you can see where he's going when he says that. You get something tangible from having these other goals in life. And from other things, you don't get anything tangible. You get some fun and you get some relaxation, but you're not really fighting for the things that will move your life in the direction you want it to be. And so in the end, it doesn't matter about the things that you're doing for fun. We're not trying to eradicate fun from our lives. We're only trying to give them the proper priority. If you are playing games your whole life or you're reading books your whole life, whatever it is that you're doing that's consuming all of your time, make sure that it has the proper priority reduced to the proper size so that you can actually start accomplishing the things that matter most in your life. The Pareto graph is used in business to list items that contribute to problems. You draw up these bar graphs of each problem and assign a percentage of the woe that it causes the main problem. When you talk about Pareto charts, it's very, very interesting. What you want to do is sit down with a bunch of little pieces of paper, maybe post-it notes, Write down everything that contributes to your problem. Put them on these little post-it notes, then arrange them. You can even, if you want to do it in the style of the Pareto chart, which is a horizontal bar chart, rank ordered from most relevant to least relevant as a cause for your problem. So you write them down and then you put them together by categories. And then what you should start to see, a small minority of issues are causing a huge majority of your problem. That's where Pareto comes in. Pareto is the 80-20 rule. And this chart is to show you and reveal to you what are those 20% things that are causing 80% of your problems. Let's say that you wanted to save money for an emergency account, but you never seem to have anything left at the end of your paycheck. So you pick all the things that contribute to your budget not working, things that are discretionary that you can't get rid of. You know, you have to pay rent, you have to buy food, you have to buy gas. But what are things that you can get rid of? So you start putting them out on little pieces of notes and you realize that two things are contributing to your problem. The first thing is you go out to eat and drink way too much and that is costing you a lot of money. Hmm. The second thing is that you realize that you are leasing a car that is probably too big for your budget. It was fun when you got a new job and you got yourself a fancy car but perhaps that's not the best choice that you're making right now. Great. So now we have written all those things down. We categorized them and we found that those two things are costing us the most amount of money that we could get rid of. So let's take a look at the first thing. The first thing is for bang for your buck is that the car, it's easy to deal with and it's easy to get rid of and easy to fix. So you could buy a nice, reliable, used car. The job is over. Or maybe you don't even need a car. But once it's done, it's done. And it takes no further action or drain on your attention. You've already succeeded. Okay, so now let's take the harder one. Eating and drinking out too much. Well, you don't want to remove your social life. And you don't want to take away time with your friends. That's very important to you. Can you possibly take some small steps and maybe just not eat out when you're eating out alone? Save the times for eating out when you're with friends. Maybe instead of eating out with friends a couple of days a week, you can get all your friends together and go out on Friday. Reduce the number, small steps. Comes to drinking, maybe instead of going to an expensive bar, friends can have each other over to their houses and apartments on a scheduled basis. Have some shared bottles of wine. Probably get a better bottle of wine because you're all sharing the cost. That way, you're not wrecking your life, but shaving things off. Small steps with little tiny costs that will have the greatest impact of your life. That's the Pareto Principle, and that chart helps show you those two things that could lead the biggest amount of impact in your life. Then you build the small steps around them. There's this famous story about Warren Buffett. He had this thing where he would ask someone to write down the top 25 things they want to do, like a goals checklist. Then he has them take the top five things that are the most important things, right? So it's the same concept we've been talking about, shaving things down into something that's the most important five things. 
But you may think that those other 20 things on your list are good backups, right? They're all good things. They're all things I want to get done and I want to do. But Warren Buffett calls them the avoid at all costs list. And so what Warren Buffett says, no matter what, these things get no attention from you until you've succeeded at the top five. James Clear, who wrote the book that we previously talked to, Atomic Habits, on his website said, every behavior has a cost. Even neutral behaviors aren't really neutral. They take up time, energy, space that could be put towards better behaviors and more important tasks. This is why Buffett's strategy is particularly brilliant. Items 6 through 25 on your list are things you care about. They are important to you, and it is very easy to justify spending your time on them. But when you compare them to your top five goals, these items are distractions. Spending time on secondary priorities is the reason you have 20 half-finished projects instead of five completed ones. And James Clear goes on to say, eliminate ruthlessly, force yourself to focus, complete a task or kill it. And later says, the most dangerous distractions are the ones you love, but don't love you back. So again, keep your focus narrow and focus on the things you really want. So here's a great tip from Allison at podfeet.com. These are two quotes from her about how she helped her employees know which way that they should go within their own careers, which directions should they take, which things they should work on. Quote, please describe a day of work where you went home and thought, dang, the taxpayers got their money out of me today. What were those things you were doing and how were you working on them that made you feel that way? Then the second question is, please describe a day of work where you thought, wow, the taxpayers got nothing this day. When you look at the things when you're having your best day and your worst day or things that really rev you up and make you feel like you accomplished so much, they help clarify which things you should be working on and things that you should get rid of. This process is exactly how I got the job I have today. I used to be in server administration. I also did a once a month training class. When I was thinking about leaving the company I was with, I thought, what is my favorite aspect of this job that I have? What do I love the most? And I realized it was the once a month training I did. I love standing up in front of a group of people and doing technical training. So then when I started looking for another job, That was top on my list. It was my favorite day. I loved being with people instead of sitting in front of a server all day. During my interview, they said, this is a big change for you. Why are you changing careers? And I told them the story about that. And to this day, it is still one of my favorite days. I love training people. I love being with people and helping them understand something they didn't know before. So here's our fun entertainment quote of the day. From the movie Star Trek III, this is where something called the Scotty Factor was invented. How much reset time till we can take her out again? Eight weeks, sir. But you don't have eight weeks, so I'll do it for you in two. Mr. Scott, have you always multiplied your repair estimates by a factor of four? Certainly, sir. How else can I keep my reputation as a miracle worker? So in life, when you think about the Scotty Factor... Think about the fact that you're not just building in buffers so that you can look like a miracle worker, but think about the fact that you're building in buffer into your life so you can just have a moment to think, so you don't burn yourself out. Don't just do Scotty factors for other people. Do them for yourself. Summary. Look at your life now and determine how many directions you are pulled in. Two. Don't just let life hand you anything, but become the editor of your life. Three, look for areas where there's bang for your buck effort. What things give you the most amount of impact for the least amount of effort? Four, find those things that you're working on and determine what really matters. Five, make room for those things that do really matter. Make sure that they have enough air and enough energy and enough resources to actually get done. Six, write things down that you're working on or have goals for and then start crossing them off. If you find it too harsh to cross them off, start to rank order them. Seven, put buffer back in your life with the time and resources 
of the things that you've removed. Eight, once you come up with the area that you want to tackle in your life, write down the things that contribute to them happening or not happening. Move them into loose categories. Look for big issues that are causing most of your problems. Challenge, drop a list of 25 things that are your goals or things that you are currently working on. Pick the top five. Hug those top five and adopt them. Glare at those other 20 with suspicion. I could really use your help to get other people find this new podcast. So subscribe, tell a friend, and leave a review. Thank you and have a wonderful week.